Hello, my name is Jesse Bradley, and here's five things that you need to be a highly effective public speaker. Number one, believe it before you say it. Your talk should resonate in the core of your being. You need to own this message. It should feel like the most important talk in the world. If you don't believe it, then why communicate it? You can't take people where you haven't gone and you can't share what you don't have. There are times when I rewrite my message so many times until it reaches that point and it deeply resonates with me. Number two, information and inspiration. When you give a talk, engage people's minds and their hearts. You can bring facts, ideas, principles, research. All of that information is helpful on a cognitive level, but then you also need to connect with the heart. This includes vulnerability, transparency, which takes courage, to open up your emotions, to let people see inside of you. You probably have a natural bent towards one or the other, but both are extremely significant. As a pastor, I started out being more professional because I thought that's what I needed to do in terms of my communication. It wasn't until later on I realized that's a false notion and the connection happens both with the mind and the heart, information and inspiration. Number three, more boldness than nerves. I had this false expectation that after giving talks for many years, I wouldn't feel nervous or scared anymore, but that's not true. I still feel that when I give a talk. Now there's eustress and distress. Eustress is that positive energy, adrenaline, we need to be alert as speakers. Distress, on the other hand, is when we get overwhelmed and the fear overtakes us, analysis, paralysis, and everything else that comes with it. Here's what works for me. When the distress starts to increase, I pray. I also have a sentence that I repeat. I believe in the Holy Spirit because I believe God gives us a spirit, not of timidity, but of love, and love casts out fear. What happens when I pray, when I say that out loud, is that my boldness is greater than that feeling of being scared. I don't know what works for you, you can choose your sentence, but ultimately it's not about those feelings going away, it's about a boldness that's greater than feeling scared. Number four, authenticity is your sweet spot. Now it's great to have a mentor, you might think of someone that you emulate, but don't try to be someone else. If you're not authentic, people are gonna see through it. They're gonna notice it and it's gonna affect your communication, it's also gonna affect your influence. You're gonna have the most influence when you're most authentic. Deep down, you're gonna have to wrestle with that insecurity, but when you're secure, you believe that you're gifted, that your message changes lives, and then you deliver it with faith. Authenticity is not permission to be unprepared and be sloppy, but when you're authentic, it empowers your listeners to be authentic in their lives as well. Number five is the top takeaway. Some people when they speak have no practical application. Other people give you a list of 10 or 12 things that they want you to do. Hone in on one specific takeaway. If they were pulling you off stage and you only had one sentence left, what do you want people to do? What are you trying to say? How can they take the information and then put it into action? When you highlight one top takeaway, you bring clarity, which is a gift, and you are empowering world changers to change their culture and make a difference in other people's lives. That concludes my top five list. On a personal level, I was fighting for my life in my 20s for one year and it took me 10 years to fully recover. And I realized that any opportunity I have to share with people, that is a gift. And it's a gift whenever you can communicate and give a talk or a message. My encouragement to you is to enjoy it and savor it because through your words, lives are gonna be transformed.